to Recipes for a Sweet Life. I'm back with another cast sugar egg. It's nearly Easter after all, so we can't have too many eggs. In the last video, I did a cast sugar egg that was decorated with wafer paper, flowers, and frosting sheet leaves. Kind of an application of scrapbooking techniques to decorative sugar art. And in this video, I'm going to do a slightly different style. It's going to be more elegant, less whimsical, but also we'll be using a combination of, of techniques you typically see in scrapbooking or cake decorating applied to sugar art. So I will once again be using punched frosting sheets for some of the details. Here's an example of one of the finished eggs. These are punched frosting sheets. But I'm in addition to that going to be using embossed fondant applique like these ribbons and stamped fondant applique like these little purple scallopy accents around the top. So slightly more elegant take using slightly different techniques, but I wanted to give you a few options for Easter. This one's also going to be finished with a piped border. We won't be mounting it right away because the piped border really needs a lot more drying time than the fondant border before it can be mounted. But these are pretty just arranged in a bowl as you'll see in the photograph going by as a centerpiece on the table or as a focal point at a party. So you don't necessarily need to mount them. I'm gonna to try to show you both options today. Refer off to my last video because I show exactly how I cast these and cut the windows. I also have a whole nother video on the 101s, if you will, of cast sugar so that you could even start with that. Okay, so what I'd like to do typically first is get the big broad pieces down. The fondant appliques tend to be some of the bigger pieces. So what I'm gonna finish out up on the, on the top edge here are these scalloped stamped fondant pieces. I used these on my Valentine heart box recently, so you'll see the stamp, I really quite like it. Again, this is nothing more than stamped fondant, and I did that also in my last video, so you can refer back to that. This stamps four at one time, but I'm gonna cut them up and use them as separate design elements. So stamped with brown food coloring on fondant, I've allowed it to dry just ever so slightly so that I don't smudge the food coloring on top. Now to apply fondant applique, I like to stick them down with corn syrup as opposed to thick royal icing, just because it leaves less lumps, smoother application of the applique. With big, thicker royal icing transfers and things that are a little more clunky, I'll use a thicker royal icing glue. But for now, we're working with corn syrup, and I'm just cutting these in half to create the ap finished appliques. And a little bit of corn syrup on the back of each just to stick it down. I generally like to work all the fondant pieces at once as opposed to doing some and then coming back later because if, when they're flexible, I have the ability to move them around a little bit more. The pieces already on here are already dry, so I can't move them to center things better, for instance. But I think that looks pretty good. Those are down. Now the next pieces I want to put down are the big blue fondant ribbons. And I have a whole video on ribbon work. So I would ask you to check that out. I do roll ribbons out on my pasta machine so that they're nice and thin, as opposed to using a rolling pin. These have the additional detail of being scored, embossed with a tracing wheel to create that stitch, stitched effect, which I rather like. Now to fit them up against these scallops, I want to A, first start cutting a length that's long enough to make it from the scallop down to the top of the egg. That's certainly long enough, but I also want to fit it to that scallop a little bit, so I'm using a the end of a little round cutter to cut a little scalloped edge so it can wedge up right next to the brown scallop. Again, more corn syrup because this is a thin fondant applique. I'm not working with thick royal icing. This just spreads more thinly and smoothly. A little on the back. And then I'm gonna stick that right up against it, trying not to stretch it as I add it. The other thing I'm making sure of is that these ribbons are, are in alignment with the ribbons previously laid on. So this one should be just a continuation of that one if I look at it from top down. And it should be nice and perpendicular to the scallop. Just want to cut the end off. You want to really cut it um, away from the seam because we're going to be putting this together and any fondant that hangs over will get in the way of, of a tight fitting egg at the end of the day. Now you could pipe on these eggs too with royal icing. That's traditionally how these eggs are done. 
but I wanted to just do something a little bit atypical. So you have many, many different decorating options. And as I said in many of my videos, you don't necessarily, it's not so important that you replicate my design as it is that you understand the techniques so that you can choose to, you know, decorate something else with the same techniques or to create a, a brand new design of your own using the same techniques. You know, don't worry about mimicking this design exactly unless of course you love it. Just check on those ribbons to make sure they're nicely aligned with the ones already laid. They look good. So I've got the big fondant pieces down, both the scallops and the ribbons. And the last accent I'm going to put on here are little frosting sheet cutouts. These are big frosting sheet cutouts I laid earlier. Here's the punch I'm going to use. It's a Martha Stewart punch, and it typically makes a trim piece that's quite big that we'll be using on my wedding cake video coming up. But it's a little too big for this project, so I just want the edge of it. So I cut out, you know, a length of it. That's plenty for the length of this egg, for the side of this egg. And I just want these little edgy pieces. So again, I'm just modifying an existing, existing punch. And this is a frosting sheet. It's an edible paper. It's made of sugar and starch, completely edible. And there are new versions of wafer papers, which are slightly thinner versions of this that are now flavored. I think it's called Icing Images has some flavored wafer papers, which I actually used on the Easter egg I did in the other shot. So they're actually pretty tasty. Now you can pre-cut the frosting sheets in advance, but if you're gonna do that, you know, definitely stick them back in their plastic containers because the frosting sheets, especially under cold weather like this, cold dry weather will get brittle and crack and be very difficult to use if left exposed to the air. Okay, so let's see. So I'm just gonna stick that down there so that it fits up nicely in between the scallops. I'm gonna just cut a little notch, a little point on it, if you will. And then we're gonna stick that down the same way we stuck down our ribbons with corn syrup. Because it's so thin, I definitely don't want anything lumpy behind this, and icing would be pretty lumpy. And here I'm just basically placing this so that it divides that yellow area that's bounded by the two blue ribbons pretty evenly. Sticking it down, trying not to touch the blue ribbons I just put down so I don't put dents in them. I put a few little dents in one of them from overhandling. And this one I cut it yesterday and put it in the bag. It is noticeably stiffer actually. So I have to be a little more careful with it. But it's still pliable enough that I can move it around. It's not breaking on me. You know you've gotten it too dry, it snaps and cracks. While the corn syrup is still wet, I have the ability to lift and reposition if I want. And I just lifted that a little bit and moved it so it's a little more centered at the bottom of the egg. Okay, so now that I'm working with royal icing transfers, which are kind of big and heavy, I am going to work with a thick icing glue to stick those down. It'll just stick a little bit better. And I'm just going to put one in between each of these scallops. Just again, mimicking this pattern here. My royal icing consistency adjustments you'll find in the link here, flashing through my video or in the video description. So my royal icing transfer video talks about how to size these so that they're uniform. And so, you know, there's some natural variability. So I always like to kind of dump them out and make sure I'm choosing ones that are most, most evenly sized. Let's get those white dots on first. For this, I'm using icing of beadwork consistency. forms a nice little round bead on its own. And I'm just using it to clean up this edge and also to kind of conceal those cut edges of the fondant scallops because they look a little rough. This icing is really, really loose, so it's spreading a lot when it's hitting the surface. So I'm just making sure they're spaced far enough apart that the dots don't bleed into each other because they're spreading a little bit when they hit. If you make a mistake, you can get out that trussing needle. White's really easy to clean up and you can just lift one, you know, lift a dot or two and replace them, which I might do. I think my first dot's really big. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, got it elevated. And I'm, I transferred my white bead icing, which I did the inner ring with, into another cone with no hole cut in the tip because I want teeny tiny dots here. And then there was just too much, it was, the icing was so loose, too much was just falling out. So I've got barely any opening here and I'm just gonna press just gently, like hardly, hardly pressing the icing out. You'll see it's coming out to do that, those accents. I'm trying to mimic that size there. And we're just gonna, I'm just neatening up. It just adds a little bit of a, oh, a lacy detail to the edge of that frosting sheet and kind of conceals it. Okay, and then the last detail on these guys is just some little teeny dots. Again, I have icing of beadwork consistency and I've barely got a hole in it to trim out the edges of these scallops. And I chose a color that's kind of matching the big transfers on purpose, just so they look, kind of makes more of a continuous design this way. I'm using these little dots also to conceal the connection point between these two fondant pieces. Now I've got it all finished, basically mirroring the purple and green one done earlier, except in shades of yellow, brown, and blue. Now I'm going to do the back side, and then we're going to put the whole thing together. So I've got the back started. What, this pattern actually connects. You know, I want the ribbons to connect with one another when I put it together. So one thing that is important to note is that Actually, let me get that other piece back over. Before I start decorating, before I started decorating this, it's important to you know, put them together and mark roughly where these other pieces are gonna go. And to mark this, but what I do is I typically just take, and I had done this earlier, just kind of wore off, I'll take my trussing needle and I'll scratch into the top of the egg to create a mark. So I know my, my blue ribbon has basically got to come up and match there. And I'll mark off all the other end points as well. But we'll just start with doing the blue one first. I started with this piece actually first with the big stamped fondant applique in the middle. So same process as for those tiny little round stamps, except I used a much bigger stamp. And I cut it down to size using a cutter roughly of about one and a half inches in diameter. You could use anything in the middle. And then I'm just applying the blue ribbons and the little fondant pieces and the dots in much the same manner. Once they're all down, I'll trim it out with more blue royal icing transfers around the center. Okay, so I'm just using my thick royal icing glue and gluing these fondant appliques, or rather these royal icing appliques down while the fondant is still somewhat pliable because I'm gently pressing them in. And that helps keep them in place, but it also makes them more at the same level as those that aren't sitting on top of the ribbons. You could cut some of the ribbons back, but I just chose not to do this. This is a little bit faster. I'm gonna go all the way around again, choosing Royalizing transfers that are roughly the same size as one another, as best I can. Now, there's some natural variation in size. Okay, I'm back. I've got my, my back piece all finished with white trim dots along the frosting sheets and all the blue transfers on. Again, I would ideally let these dry overnight before I'd assemble them so all the icing elements were completely dry, but we're gonna move forward here on video time. My first step before actually putting the two halves together though is, is fitting this little picture insert. Again, this is stamped fondant similar to the applique used here and here, except I pressed it onto fondant 
lifted this and let this dry completely overnight so my fondant is now quite rigid. Now make sure you're using a fondant that actually dries rigid because some don't but I'm working with Satinized brand and it does set up quite rigid. This is actually now quite brittle and fragile. So I've just fit that oval onto the back side of the egg and that's gonna be my little picture. And now the, I'm gonna, well, actually I was just holding it there. So I'm gonna get it back into position, turn the egg over and then glue it into, some, into place with some thick royal icing glue. This is very similar to what I did in the other video. Now normally I would have dried this overnight so I could let this sit I could sit this face down on bubble wrap and glue this in, but because my dots on the front are probably still wet, I'm holding the egg in the air as I do this. Normally this would not be the work process. This makes it a little more complicated. I just don't want to smush any icing that I recently did. But I can just, I'm putting a lot of thick royal icing glue in here to keep that plaque in place. I need a little bit more down here and to fill any gaps, basically. And then I would normally, again, probably dry this upside down on bubble wrap because my icing dots are wet, I don't really want to run the risk of smooshing them. So I'm going to turn this face up and hope that I've got enough icing in there that this thing is not going to, the disc is not going to fall out. Now, there you go. There you have it. A little picture, and you can choose any number of things. Obviously, I did a flower there. But I'm, I'm going to let that dry a little bit, and then we're going to mount the two together. Okay, I've got my egg propped here. I'm going to let him dry a little bit longer because my insert was kind of falling out backwards. So I need that inside royal icing to dry a little bit before I put it together with the back side because once those two halves are glued together, there's no fixing that inside piece very easily. So in the meantime, while that's drying, I'm going to show you how you could do a possible mount for this. If you refer back to my wafer paper egg with the flowers and leaves, I did mount that egg upright. This egg we're not going to mount upright. I think they look pretty just on the side, but if you wanted to, I'm going to show you an, a different option for decorating the mount, and then I'll show you a final picture of it mounted. I'm going to show you it both mounted and unmounted, but this just gives you another decorating option for the base. And I did a slightly different style variation in that last video. So in the last video, I had a base where the fondant, I, I decorated, this again is cast sugar. It was cast in a tart mold, and I decorated it more vertically. I had fondant strips that went up and down. Here, what I'm gonna do is just create a little scalloped edge, again, by using fondant. And I'm using that same blue that I've got in the ribbons just to tie the design together. And I'm cutting out little fondant circles. Again, I've rolled this fondant about an eighth of an inch thick on my pasta machine. I'm cutting out little circles. I'm gonna use them to create a little scallop pattern at the bottom. I've already done mu much of it. Again, same process. I'm going to cut a little bit off so it's not quite so round. This will be the, the flat side will go down. And just attach that. Ooh, that's a lot of corn syrup. To the bottom of this little pedestal. Like so. And to get it to wrap around the edges a little bit neater so it doesn't stick out as much, I just take the edge of my paring knife and just kind of press press the sides of the circle into the sides of the sugar. And we'll put one more down. And what I'm going to do after this is come in with dots, probably blue, but I'm going to do this after it's fully assembled and give little teeny blue, you know, connecting dot highlights on top of the scallop. And you'll see a final picture of that. But I don't want to do that yet because I'd like to see the whole egg mounted before I choose how to fully decorate the base. Sometimes I feel, sometimes you can over decorate the base and it detracts from the main egg. And I just want to make sure that I make my design choices on the base after it's fully mounted. And then what I'll do right before I mount it again, before I mount the egg onto it, I like to put some wet moist fondant there to hold the two pieces together. Cause if you glue dry sugar egg to dry sugar mount, tendencies for not to stick very well. And what I think I'm going to be doing is using a stamped fondant applique there. So you'll have a base that looks something like so when it's mounted, which could be kind of pretty. And then filling in with dark blue dots down at the bottom. Okay, so that's the basics of the mount. This I won't stick down yet because I would stick that down right before I were to assemble that. Okay, I'm back with my pieces hopefully more dry than they started.
And this is why I like them dry, because to mount them, I do need to put one, typically the back face down. If I were going to put candies in, now is the time to do it. And I think I will put a few into this guy. Since the sugar eggs aren't edible, it's nice to have something edible inside. So that's plenty. And then we're just going to use my thick royal icing glue rather liberally to glue the two halves together. And then I'm going to come in with a piped seam on this one. Now, if I did all my measurements properly, these stripes should all line up. And they look like they're doing a fairly good job of that on this side. And also on this side, I'm looking at it from all angles, and also from top down to make sure that the pieces are nicely centered on top of one another. Now at this point, it's pretty stable. I can go ahead and pipe that seam without any more waiting time. Okay, so I'm going to do a pipe seam on this. In the other video, you saw fondant seam. Pipe seam needs a little more drying time before you can mount, but it does add some texture, which is kind of nice, and a frilly accent on this particular egg. Here I'm working with a very thick icing. If you want to maintain the texture of anything you pipe through a textured, you know, through a metal pastry tip, the icing has to be very thick to hold its shape. So I'm working with something close to my glue consistency, and I'm working with a star tip, number 27 tip. My egg's kind of bouncing around, but I'm just like to start at the top. So I have a symmetric meeting point at the top, and you'll see what I mean by that when I come around. Pushing forward, pulling back. Pushing forward, pulling back. And I go all the way around to the bottom, and then I'm going to turn the egg the other way and do the other side so I get a mirror image of the piping. So if you know you're going to mount it, you just may not want to do a big hefty border at the bottom. You might want to taper off a little bit. So that completes one side. I'm going to go ahead and finish the other side. Exact same process. Let it dry completely and then it'll be ready to nestle in a basket with Easter grass, with some other eggs, or ready to mount. And I'm going to show you two different finished pictures of both of those versions. Till next video, live sweetly. Thank you.